Hey guys, how's everything going? This is Jacer. Uh, in this video, let's talk about something not related about uh, React. It's about some problems that we're seeing that. It's, uh, um, there was a mismatch between the client side and the server side. So I think this is a general question which happens pretty commonly uh, in all web apps, especially for us building the rich applications. Um, so, uh, what is the problem? Um, yeah. Suppose we have this kind of architecture um, for the client, and clients will request the, the API through the load balancer, and not only the API, but maybe either some dynamic routes, component stuff, and the load balancer would route the request to different uh, servers, right? They're the bunch of servers serving. So for now, uh, every part of the system is at the same version, which is called uh, version one and uh, works perfectly because that's what he expected. Now we need to add something. Uh, we need to bump to version two, but we're facing a problem. We are very uh, easily, it's very easy for us to fall into a mixed state situation like this. Like, okay, there are some mixed version uh, on the client and also there's a mixed state uh, version of uh, in the servers. And now when the request comes to the load balancer, it doesn't know what to what to route to. And it might result in a client side version, old version request lands on the uh, a server version, new version, or there's a new version client request something which is which lands on a old version server. So this is a, a mismatch between the client and the server. This is buggy. Uh, this is a uh, um, this could be resulting in mostly two reasons. The first one is about the um, mixed version of servers. This is uh, this is because for a large group of servers, uh, we cannot like uh, upgrade them, like uh, deploy the new version at the exact same times. So there w will be uh, a short. I think it's fairly short, but there is a period of time that there the servers in are in the mixed state, right? We have to do them, uh, yeah. We cannot just uh, do them, uh, uh, just uh, instantly uh, at the same time. And for the client side, uh, it's a bit different. Is that uh, usually, um, unless the users reload the browser, refresh it, the versions won't get updated, right? That is because static resources are uh, often uh, cached by CDN and cached by browser or by service worker, uh, so it's not easy for them to get updated. Uh, that's why. Uh, even when we are serving the HTML with those static verse static resource version, unless the user reload, we cannot update them. So the users are kind of a experience a stale UI uh, and flow and a stay there. So this is the true causes about uh, of this mismatch state. So what's the impact of it? Um, it uh, depends on what you're doing. Like say you're only one have only one server and uh, you're only serving a static HTML, I think it's not a big problem, right? Uh, usually it's fine. Um, but also, if you are serving the API, pure data API through the uh, between the client and server, and there is no other uh, component dependencies, I think it's fairly easy to handle. Um, but anyway, it really depends on your architecture, but the problem generally, the, exist for all application, I guess. The thing is that uh, um, if for the cases like like version one request landing on version two and version two request landing on version one, one, it creates a very bizarre experience for the users. It might be broken, unexpected errors, and uh, somehow the flow cannot be completed. And uh, if it is the flow is about money, uh, like payment stuff, it's really something you don't want. Uh, you don't want. Like if you're building some apps, like financial apps, that is more critical quest problems, right? Um, yeah. So, uh, the rule of thumb is that the version between client and server should be matched. Uh, but there are but there are some uh, some situations we cannot achieve that. Then at least the mixing state should be avoided. So we should, uh, so that transition period, we should avoid the mixed user experience. So how should we handle the problem? The first one is about uh, the case of new client, a new version client request landing on the old server. 
uh, which is the this one version one requires, and somehow landing in the version two server, we can easily we can wish easily uh, resolve this by using the sticky sessions. Um, it means that uh, for load balancer, uh, the request for a specific client will always land on the same server. So for version one, uh, it's previously land on the ver version one server like like here, right? Like here, then. Uh, then uh, when the server mm, uh, with the when the server is updated when, like version 2 is updated uh, it version 1 was still uh, no, 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 oh version 1 version 2 to version 1 of oh, this one I'm sorry so new client is this this case version 2 to version 1 uh, so previously this, this it's version 1 and suppose like it lands on this one, version one server. Uh, okay, this one. Um, either way. Uh, okay, let's suppose this one. And then, in order for this version two to uh, version one to become version two, the user need to reload or some other mechanism to update the client side, right? That means the server it fetches, uh, it requests from must always be updated so that it could be serving the new version client. So uh, if we start st st sticky sessions, there is no such thing as version two to go to version one. It should always be version one to version one or version one to version two and the version two to version two. There's no version one to uh, version two to version one. So this is some solution. So now let's handle the uh, very uh, problem of version one to old version to new version. Uh, it also re depends on what your app is, uh, how your app is architect. Uh, if your uh, server is only serving data through API, which means that there is a clear separation of client, UI logic, and the data, then it should be easily solved by versioning of your API. If you're adding some fields for your new client, then it should be fine because the, the fields are not used in the old client. You can safely add them. It's just a, a redundant, but it doesn't break anything. Uh, so you can safely add them, and for the client, you just uh, uh, you can just create a new version of client and serving them. Uh, it should be fine. Uh, it did not break. And if you modify some fields or remove something, that is a problematic. Uh, I suggest you do your version in it, um, either through either uh, on the field level or through the uh, path, URL path level. Um, so that if you if you guarded it with version. That you can, uh, you can set the version in your newer uh, client, the, which means that the old client will fetch the old version API, the new client will fetch the new, a new version of API. So that that is solved. I think uh, this is pretty uh, easy, and everyone is doing so. Uh, but things becomes a mo bit more complex about the component dependencies. By component dependencies, I mean if you are serving some dynamic router. Um, like uh, you're not bundling all the resources in initial bundle, um, and then you want to do the dynamic import, um, and you also I can add some server logic inside of it, like authentication stuff like that. Um, then there's a problem, um, which it, which is serving the, comp the the component you're serving may not be the uh, st static version, right? Um, that that means that uh, here say. Uh, for the uh, version one, it do requ request some dynamic route, dynamic component, and from server ha somehow landing the version two, uh, because in version two you've already removed the uh, removed the version of one component, so the component is not there. Um, and uh, if you are serving the new component, um, you are assuming that the new version component is in the version one client, and uh, it's not there, so this one is pretty um, pretty bad. So how should we ser solve them? Uh, we can do something similar to the API uh, uh, solution here. So when we are build our stack resources, we need to store the current version in the server. And uh, we're serving our dynamic stuff, compare the client version from the cookie uh, and the version needed, like uh, the, the version here. So, uh, when we are sending out our HTML, we set the version uh, of current version in the client, in the cookie, and 
and in the future, anytime the client requests some API or dynamic component, uh, it will get the cookie passed along, and we can detect the current version of the client, and we compare them. If it is, if it is older, um, we would just serve differently, right? If they say, okay, this is an old version, and then in the server, we need to handle gracefully to serve the old component. If it is newer, it means that the version two, we can serve something, uh, we can serve the new component. Or you can do some uh, bad experience, but working is that uh, uh, you can just force your pop up and say, "Hey, re refresh." Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty not common. I think it's not common in a web app because people just reload it frequently. Okay, cool. Um, so this is it. So the general idea is that you need to, we need to let the server know what kind of what uh, the. Uh, the version is for the client, and also what the version, uh, current server version needs. So, we, uh, just to net, let the server know all the version information and do the judgment. And of course, we cannot just uh, support of every old version, right? Like, uh, like uh, for the native apps, you often just uh, support uh, latest three main version, something like that. And we can do the same, or even we could just uh, do one version. Um, yeah, that depends on what you need. Um, maybe we can do just one version back backward compatibility and then fall back uh, plan yeah okay so here's a question does hash based versioning help um yeah actually we're doing the hash based versioning uh, for each module um, so the which results in that uh, um, each module has its own uh, version in, in the in the path. Um, but I think th that's not solving our problems here because uh, we're solving a general idea, um, general problem. Uh, even if you are using hashed-based uh, version, uh, the version here is just not a simple number. It's just become a version graph, right? So this module is this version, and this module is that version. So we're still facing this problem. We need to handle them. Uh, maybe, yeah. Um, uh, so, so it helps with uh, reducing the storage of stack resources, but uh, it doesn't solve our problem. We still need to handle them. How does Next.js solve it? I don't know. Uh, I, I guess they're not. Um, I know they are. They're kind of building this, building this app into. Uh, uh, we can access uh, with uh, the direct route as SSR, and also we can just uh, use the client side. Uh, navigation, right? Uh, it was somehow a generated component from a server and serve it to the uh, the client side. Um, I don't know. I guess I uh, so I need to find it out, and uh, I love to find it out. Uh, first, I need to understand how it works. Um, if you really know how to solve this, solve it, then please comment on my post. Okay, so this is summary. Um, so this is a, I think it's pretty common problems. Uh, and the impact of it depends on really depends on your architecture. It might not be a problem. It's not a big deal, but if you care about the user experience, I suggest you think about um, your app again and do some graceful backward compatibility. So the general idea is that uh, let the server let the server which serves the dynamic thing, no matter whether it's API or uh, dynamic component, let it know what current version of the client is and let the server do the, the judgment. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Hope it helps. Um, you can find the details about this on my blog. It's jsr.dev and hope it helps. See you next time. Bye-bye.